So hello, my name is Chris P, and I'm a doctor at Sacred Heart Pensacola Hospital. Uh, today, I'm accompanied by my close friend Brendan, who is a local council member, council member in Pensacola. Along with him, I'm joined by my very close friend Tata Juan, who is a janitor at my hospital. The three of us share the same opinion, and that opinion is that our government in Pensacola is not doing a good enough job to supply clean and good running water for all of their citizens. Uh, our city of Pensacola has been through a lot, considering that in 2009, we were, our city was named with the worst quality of water in the country. Since then, we made strides to our goal of clean running water for all, but the effort that our government is giving is not good enough. In Pensacola, the population is around 830,000. Uh, our ethnic groups are 67.2% uh, white and 26.5% African American while around 3% is other. Um, the median income in Pensacola is around 43000 and the uh, median property value is around 150000 uh, The water that is contaminated in Pensacola is, in, is located in its metro area, which is kind of the equivalent to Waikiki. Uh, the metro area is heavily populated and the contaminated water basically makes it hard on everybody. So business, tourists, uh, people, and hotels are all affected by this because um, the stuff in our contaminated water uh, presents a lot of health risks. So, uh, hi, I'm Tata Juan, and I wanted to uh, kind of elaborate on um, the situation I had. So uh, here in Pensacola, there are a lot of uh, different things affected by um, this toxic algae, or this problem at hand. Um, and it keeps on spreading. And so the stuff that is um, affected by this algae are like uh, surrounding animals, vegetation, marine life, and of course, um, the community, the people. Um, this algae is a dangerous sub dangerous substance in more ways than one. So like when in contact with animals or marine life, they get um, either really sick or just die off. Um, since a lot of vegetation is given life through water and like in the wetlands, um, the plants simply just um, rot or die off, just like the surrounding animals and wildlife. Um, if that's happening to the surrounding organisms, I don't really want to see what the algae uh, can do to an actual human being when in contact. Um, in addition to uh, health risks, um, it also affects the economy. Um, as you can see in the picture here, it's uh, a couple of hotels that depend on like all the beaches and the water. Um, most of the comedian venues rely on tourism, so without um, the water to help stimulate the um, stimulate the economy. Um, the economy usually uh, loses money, and if the water even affects the workers in those venues, there'll be no workers to run the venues. So either way, the economy falls. Uh, right now, there's no um, solution that we know of, so we could just wait until this nightmare is over. Um, you may be thinking, why you should even be concerned? Uh, you should be concerned because imagine someone close to you getting sick and you can't do anything. All you can do is really hope for the best. The city council has a lot of power and impact on the city and this job is to create... This means that the city council can do a lot to help better the city. The main job with the city council is to both review I mean, create short and long-term goals as well as review and improve the budget. This means that in this water crisis, the city council will be able to make a goal and set a budget for the problem. The solution to fix the, to fix the water crisis is to create a new treatment plant. But before that, you must find the source of the problem and start from there. We believe that first you must see the effective piping and the systems that are affected by the algae and have those fixed and replaced. After that, we believe that another treatment plant could be created and built 
to only double check the water that goes through the treatment plants. The total of this would be around 10 to 20 million dollars and it would take somewhere around 10 years and conclude in 2025 or 2026. Uh, these are our call to actions and this is our work type. Being a doctor at the Sacred Heart uh, Hospital in Pensacola, it really hurts my heart to see all these kids that are affected um, by the toxins in the water. And um, uh, uh, the hospital and um, county companies, kind of like the police, have been uh, supplying uh, bottles of water to everyone in the uh, Pensacola area so that um, everyone can resume their lives, or try to resume their lives uh, like it was regular, and um, yeah. Isn't algae naturally occurring? Isn't this just nature taking its course? Um, well, in this situation, um, this toxic algae, um, what consists inside of it is, um, the most important thing we're looking at here is uh, radium, which uh, consists of radiation. And, there's so much algae going around the community that um, when you come in contact, you're taking in so much radiation at, um, at one time, so you can get really sick from it. It's like an unhealthy rate of algae and radium that your body is taking at one point. Okay. So as a janitor, I'm curious to know why you would be so concerned with this and how that's affect your life. <laughs> Well, um, since I work at a hospital, um, I look at all the patients and I see um, I see a lot of patients that come through and I feel uh, really sorry for them. I've lived in Pensacola all my life and as I've seen, this is probably one of the worst incidents. I'm seeing so many people coming in and um, worried, worried um, about what could happen. So I feel that um, if the government could do a little more, um, it would help the people um, have their nerves put at ease. So I think that would really help the community. Do you have children who are also affected? Um, <laughs> actually, uh, no. <laughs> but I think of the patients as my own. So uh, that's why I work my job. How did the treatment happen? Well, it started when the, since the treatment plant is like close by the ocean, and this is a mini storm here on Florida. When the storms occur, or like high water levels, sometimes the water from the ocean will flow into the treatment plant, thus making the water that is untreated go through the pipe systems and into the zones. Alrighty, 